Hi everybody, here we are in the third video of a series on pulleys, and this time we're going to introduce not more pulleys, but we're going to talk about a compound machine. And a compound machine, my definition just means that we have more than one simple machine that's put together. So, so far we talked about the simple machines of the lever, the wheel and axle, and the pulley, and we've done problems with them just individually, but what happens when we start combining them? Okay, so that's the question. And so we have a situation here where we have a, a lever, Okay, and in fact, it's a second class lever because the load is in the middle, like a wheelbarrow, right? I'm gonna lift up on the end here using this pulley system. But I also, like I just said, have this movable pulley that's attached, okay? So what we wanna do through is we wanna go through and we wanna figure out the mechanical advantage of each piece individually. So let's talk about the lever first, okay? So with the second class lever, um, whoops, lever, not level, Okay, sorry about the bell in the background. The mechanical advantage of that system means I'm gonna compare the distances, right? So I'm gonna compare the distance that I uh, had to exert my effort over compared to the distance that resistance force, okay? There's the definition using distances of mechanical advantage. And um, I can tell here that I uh, lifted from a distance of 12 feet and I had a distance of four feet from the 300 pound load to the fulcrum. And so whenever I compare those two, it looks like I have a mechanical advantage of three from the lever. Now let's look at the single pulley that I have out here. See, I have the weight of this object pulling down, right? If I let go, if this cord was cut between the pulley and the lever, the object would drop. So it's pulling downward right now, okay? So if I have a downward force, that means I'm looking for the amount of strands that pull upward. That would be this guy here and this guy here. I have two on this side. So the mechanical advantage for the pulley is two, okay? The question is, what do I do with the three? Oh, sorry, with the three and the two, okay? And for compound machines, all I have to do is take the mechanical advantage of each machine individually and multiply them. So my mechanical advantage overall of this system is three times two. The mechanical advantage is six for this machine. Mechanical advantage of six. Three from the lever, two from the pulley, three times two is six. So then the follow-up question is obviously going to be how much force did I have to lift with here in order to raise or keep this 300 pound force in equilibrium? So it's not moving, it's just hanging there and the lever is not falling down, but it's also not rising up. It's just right there, midair, right? And so what I have to do then is I have to say, well, uh, mechanical advantage, the formula tells me how much force I was able to overcome given how much I put in, right? And so if I have six pounds, six for the mechanical advantage, and I have a load of 300, then I need to find out the effort force. I have my effort force on the bottom of the fraction, so I'm gonna go ahead and multiply both sides by the effort force, and that gets rid of all the fractions. So a little algebra here. So now I have six times Fe is equal to 300. Let me go ahead and write that off here. I have six times the effort force is equal to 300. I need to divide out the six in order to figure out what the effort force is. And that leaves me 300 divided by six. The effort force is 50 pounds of force that I would need to apply to that pulley. So hopefully that makes sense. What do I do if I have multiple machines? You multiply the mechanical advantages together to get the overall mechanical advantage. You use the overall mechanical advantage in order to figure out the effort forces or the distances or whatever you're talking about. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about a compound machine that involves multiple pulleys.